Hi there Jeep owners. Today in your 2011 Jeep Liberty, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's Invisibrake Supplemental Braking System. There's five main components you'll need when flat towing your vehicle with whatever you want to pull it with, whether it be a motor home or a tractor trailer. You'll need your tow bar, which is the connection between your vehicle and whatever you're towing. You'll need your safety cables, which is a supplemental connection in addition to your tow bar. You'll need your diode wiring, which takes all the lighting signals from the towing vehicle and sends them to the towed vehicle. And you'll also need your supplemental braking system, which will apply the brakes on your towed vehicle whenever you hit the brakes inside your towing vehicle. And of course, you'll need a base plate for your towed vehicle, which is going to provide the connection point for your tow bar to attach to. And this is what our braking system looks like when it's installed. The operating unit can be placed anywhere inside the vehicle. We chose to place it underneath the driver's seat. And this unit here will monitor all the lighting signals from your motor home to determine when you're hitting the brakes. And it'll also use an included inertia sensor that is inside of the box here to determine the rate at which the vehicle is going to a stop. So it can calculate the appropriate amount of pressure to pull and apply the brakes here on the towed vehicle. The adjustment knob here at the back allows you to adjust the sensitivity for the amount of pressure to apply to the brakes. So if it doesn't feel like it's stopping quite enough, we can just crank that up. And if it's stopping too much, we can just turn that down. The system designed when I hit the brakes in the towing vehicle, which I'm using in my truck here. Our customer doesn't use his motor home. He actually flat tows his setup for delivery so he can bring his vehicle along. But when I hit the brakes here, it will send those lighting signals to the back like we just talked about and the brake pedal in the back should apply. This is gonna be the same whether you're pulling it with a truck like we are here, or if you're in your motorhome pulling it. So you can see here that when I hit the brake pedal, it's going to apply the brakes in our vehicle. And as an included safety measure, a breakaway switch does come included with your kit. And whenever this pin is pulled, in the event of a catastrophic disconnect, it will apply the brakes in the vehicle to help it come to a safe stop. We can then hear the braking system operate and also our monitor light will illuminate. Now what you're seeing here is the upgraded wireless monitor system. This does not come included with your braking system, but it operates very similarly, except you don't have to run a wire all the way through your motorhome. You simply just plug a box into your auxiliary power outlet in the motorhome and it transfers it wirelessly. Included with your kit, you will receive a hardwired monitor light with an audio board as well that will produce a beep in the event of a catastrophic disconnect. And here on the pedal, you can see the actuating components that actually pull and apply the brake. This to me is the biggest and best part of the Invisibrake system is that you have such a small footprint here on your pedal. Some of the other systems out there, such as Demco Stay and Play or an Air Force One, have a large actuator here on the pedal. Their systems work fantastic, but this large pedal can be a bit cumbersome and get in the way of your feet when you're just driving normally. With this just being a small little clamp and bolt, you almost don't even notice that it's there. And using the cable and pulley system, everything is very well hidden underneath all of our carpet. So it just gives you the cleanest look out of all the braking systems, in my opinion. We'll begin our installation by mounting all of the major components. Most of these are gonna be inside the vehicle. There are a couple of things that you'll have here under the hood, depending on the options you chose. One of the biggest things you'll need to mount is the operating unit. This unit here typically mounts underneath the seat. Now on our Liberty here, it is a little bit difficult to find a good spot for it because it's a pretty large little box. And underneath our seat here, we've got a lot of humps. We are gonna mount it right here behind the seat. When you put the seat all the way back, you'll see that it mostly covers it up. It's nicer to have it up further underneath, but unfortunately we don't have that option here on the Liberty. To get it mounted up, we're actually just going to use the ears located on each side of the box and just cut a slit with our razor knife in the carpet and those ears will hold it in place. I went ahead and stuck the, the edge of my razor knife just behind the ear and then I'm just going to slit the carpet now. We're just gonna make a slit down about an inch, just enough for us to fit the ear in. Once you've made a slit like that on the other side as well, take the ears on your box and just bend it down like that. We're gonna do the same thing over on the other side. And then we can take these bent ears and we'll push them down into the slits. And then when we push on the box, it'll flatten the ear back out and keep it in place. 
that just hooks in like that. And this side will hook in similarly. And once you've got both sides in, just press down on it. And that'll help bend those ears back out, locking it in place, keeping it held down to our carpet. The next thing we'll wanna mount is the actuating cylinder and attachment on our brake pedal. We'll start with the brake pedal clamp, and you can see how I've got that around it here. You will have to maybe pull your, park it, your carpet back. When we go to do the cylinder part, you are gonna have to pull that back, so I've got that pulled back there so you can see that attachment point. But the clamp is just going to be the L bracket here on one side and then a straight bracket on the other side, which is nuts and bolts that run through it to clamp it to the pedal. You can put this on either side, it really doesn't matter. We chose to put ours a little bit off to the passenger side because it just gave us a better angle to where we mounted our pulley. The cable you see here with the nuts here on the end and the pulley here at the back, all are part of your operating cylinder. So we want to first figure out where we're gonna put the cylinder and then we're gonna route the cable from the cylinder and attach it to our bracket here. The operating cylinder we actually put behind the plastic trim panel here. So the piece that runs across here, we just pulled it up and set it aside. And then you'll have the panel that we're gonna hide it behind. There's just one pin there, we'll just pull that out. And this is really far enough. You don't need to take anything else apart because we can just kind of give a little pressure on that. And here's our cylinder, we can slide it in and out. The paneling holds it all in place. So we're just gonna leave it in there. You will see that there is one attachment we have to make to the cylinder that's an air hose. So it's a pretty good idea to attach the small air hose that comes in your kit to the cylinder and then slide it in there. You can always trim off the excess of the hose later. This hose simply just pushes right in. It's a quick connect fitting. So when you unravel this hose and poke it in, it'll just hold in place. This is the smaller hose that comes included with your kit. So we're just gonna slide that guy back up in there. And we'll just put that back in place. This cable was then routed towards the front. What you're seeing is the cable sheathing, not the exposed cable we saw down at the pedal. So that just routes all the way down the front, down the carpet. We'll pull the carpet back here so you can see. And it actually runs behind this paneling here and we mounted it there. Now you wanna to wait to mount this portion of it until after you have hooked it up to your pedal bracket here. There's just two nuts. You just simply take the back nut off. You'll slide it in. The L bracket here has a small slit in the side for the cable to slide through. You just slide it on and reattach the nut. The pulley here though is what we're concerned about next. This needs to be mounted in a way so it's a fairly straight pull from where our bracket is to our pulley. Give you a reference of where this is. This nut right here is for our accelerator pedal. So we just kind of went straight to the left of that and then down just a little bit. And we used the included self-tapping screws to mount that up. This little section right here on this black insulation, we did have to cut out a small square of that so that way our pulley can mount directly to a metal surface. The cable is okay, it can hide behind there just like that. We can just leave it hidden behind there. Now that we've got this set here and at the pedal, we can then clamp this. We wanna set it up to where there's just a little bit of slack. If we take a look over here at the pedal clamp, the ball coming out the end, just a little bit, just like that. We've got a good amount of slack. So once you've got that to where it's not too tight pulling on your pedal and you've got a little bit of slack, you can come back over here, place the clamp over the end. It's just a little U-shaped piece that runs over the cable and then use the two included self-tapping screws to run it down. I did have to cut away a little bit of the sealant here in order for it to run down flush. When attaching this we also want to keep in mind that we want our cable to be in a straight line and direct path over to our pulley. Whenever you're mounting any of this or routing any of it you want to try to avoid any kinking or very aggressive bends in the cable. We want it to have a nice kind of general gradual curve around to its destination. We're now on the back of our Invisibrake unit again, where we need to start connecting all of our wiring and hoses. You'll have two wire harnesses that come included with your kit. You'll have one that has a four pole wiring, which is what you see here with the white, brown, yellow, and green. It has a square four prong connector that plugs right into the back of the unit here. I'll go ahead and unplug it so you can see it. 
It does have six pins, but there's only four being used. So we're just going to plug that back in. You'll then have a, another harness that has, it will look kind of like it's two separate harnesses, but it's, they, they come into one. That's this one over here. This has your power and ground wires, which is the red and black one here, as well as your breakaway switch wiring here. But again, it does all go to one connector, which is a flat connector that you can see here. This connector does only plug in one way. If you look at the corners, they've got an angle cut to them on one side and the other side of the square, sharp 90 degree cut. Then if we moved over just a little bit more, we'll have two hoses that connect to it. This hose here, this small one, is coming from the actuating cylinder that we placed behind the paneling just over there. So we can cut our hose to length and then this just pushes in. It's a quick connect fitting just like you saw on the cylinder. The other hose that you see here will route outside to the engine compartment where we'll connect to our brake vacuum booster. This is just quarter inch airline. There is a nipple coming off of the back of our unit here. We use this small rubber hose that comes included with it. We just use the entire length of it. They're gonna be pre-cut just like this at this length. Just poke that onto the end on the operating unit here and then you can poke in your quarter inch airline to the other side of this rubber hose. All of the wiring that you see here is going to be routed outside of the engine compartment as well as this quarter inch line. This is the only thing that's really just gonna stay in here because it's going just from here to the actuating cylinder right over there. Here you can see the factory wiring coming out of the carpet. That's where we poked our wires in. Once you poke them in there, we can just route them towards the front. When you remove the trim panel here, it'll make it easier to route that wiring under the carpet because you can just grab the carpet and it just pulls right up and then you can easily feed it from here and grab it to route it forward. You can see the wiring here going underneath the carpet. Once we go underneath the carpet, we do go forward and then up on the left, there is a grommet that we're gonna pass our wires through. It's a bit difficult to see here from the inside, but we can clearly see it from the outside so if you are having difficulties finding it on the inside, we'll head over to the outside real quick to show it to you. And you can just poke like a screwdriver or something through that grommet and that'll make it much easier to see what we're talking about. We're here on the outside and just to the driver's side of our brake booster here, the grommet is located just next to it there. So you can take your screwdriver and just poke it through that. And then when you're looking on the inside, you'll see your screwdriver poking through and that'll make it much easier to find it on both the outside and the inside here. We're going to start making our connections here on the outside now that they're routed out here. This is the harness that coming from our braking system right here from the operating unit. The wiring you see here is our existing diode wiring. Now you'll need to tap into this to get all the signals from your motorhome because it uses those lighting signals from your motorhome to help determine when to apply the brake. The green wire is your right turn signal, yellow is your left turn, and brown is your stop lamp circuit. So all we did was we just cut each one of these on our diode circuit, and we used heat shrink butt connectors, added the wires that come from our unit to them, and they match the same color coding. Because this color coding is the typical color coding for trailer turn signals and lighting. So we just poke those in there, crimp those down. The last wire off of your circuit is going to be the white wire here. This one I stripped back a little bit further and ran down over to the sidewall here where we attached the included ring terminal to it. Just strip the wire back and crimp that on and then use the included self-tapping screw to run it in. And this is our ground for the lighting circuit. The red and black wires that come off of the other harness are just your power and your ground wires. So the black wire we just routed up here to the negative post on our battery where we attached a ring terminal and then just attached it right there directly to the battery. The positive wire, we do need to put a harness on for our fuse, which will allow us to protect the circuit in the event that we have any shorts. This comes included with your kit and you'll wanna hook it to your battery positive post. Now our customer has a battery disconnect switch pre-installed on his, so we can't hook it directly to the battery post because if he turns his disconnect off, our braking system won't have any power and it won't be operational. So we need to make sure we hooked our 
power to the side of our disconnect switch where it always has power. As long as this circuit always has power, you are good to go. I highly recommend the battery positive post by just doing, just like we did here on the ground, just a ring terminal and going directly to the stud here if you're, you don't have a disconnect switch or anything like this. The other wire that you have here, this black one, is for your breakaway switch. The breakaway switch we mounted up at the front of the vehicle, so this just routes all the way down this side here. And there's actually an opening here next to your headlight. We routed it down that opening. That actually feeds behind the bumper here over to the breakaway switch. Now the breakaway switch, we did have to make our own brackets to mount the breakaway switch. So you will probably need some scrap metal to do so. We've just got a piece of scrap metal here that we bent kind of in a Z shape where it goes over, it goes up, and then it goes over again. We drilled the hole in the end and then just used a self tapper to run it into the bumper up there. But the bumper sits up a lot higher, so you're gonna need something to extend this down. If you need some metal to bend to help make your own custom bracket, we have long brackets here at eTrailer.com used for mounting your trailer wiring at the back of your vehicle. They make great options for getting wiring mounted here on the front. The metal is strong enough that it'll hold things securely, but it's also soft enough that you can easily bend it into the shape you want to and drill through it without any problems. The breakaway switch wire is coming from your operating unit on the four flat connector that we showed you, and it runs up to the breakaway switch at the front. There's a two prong connector on your breakaway switch as well as on the end of this wire and the two simply just plug together. We can now move on to tapping into our brake vacuum booster. The quarter inch air hose that we had connected to the operating unit on the inside and routed here to the outside. We took the same path under the carpet following the wires out here. So they came out behind our fuse box over by the brake booster. We routed it over here and up to here. This is your brake vacuum booster hose from the factory here. We went ahead and cut the hose here and here to insert our components. I highly recommend that you use a pair of hose cutters to cut these. It'll make it much easier and give you a much cleaner cut. The other reason why I recommend those is for cutting your airline hose here. If you just use side cutters or dikes, it can deform the end and potentially cause it to pinch and close up. If you use the correct hose cutters, it keeps it round and you get good free flow through it. The cut closest to the brake vacuum booster that we made, we are going to insert the T fitting that comes in your kit. We're gonna be using the smaller of the two T fittings because there are multiple sizes that come in your kit depending on the size air hose that you have. We want the smaller ones to easily poke in to the factory line. And the third prong on your T, which is going to be an even smaller prong than the two that go into your factory line, will poke into the pre-cut small rubber hose that comes in your kit. This one looks just like the one in your operating unit. You're gonna receive two of these, for one for each end of your airline. Poke that onto the T and then poke the other end of your quarter inch airline into your rubber hose. The second cut we made is closer to the engine and we place a check valve in between the hose and then just poke it back together. The check valve needs to be in the correct orientation one side of the check valve is black and the other side is clear. The black side must face towards the engine and the clear side will face towards your T-fitting. Now is the point of our installation where we would hook up our monitor wire. The monitor wire simply taps into the brake signal from your factory brake pedal switch and it just routes that up to the front where you can connect it to another wire that you're gonna run on your motorhome up to the monitor wire and audio board in your motorhome. But instead of doing that, our customer has chose to use the brake monitor system from Roadmaster, which is a wireless monitoring system. So this will hook into your factory brake pedal sensor and it will detect whether or not the brake pedal is being depressed and then send a signal to a remote receiver in your motorhome or whatever vehicle is pulling your Jeep. In order to not tap into our factory circuitry on our Jeep, we installed a stoplight switch. And this will also ensure that we're gonna get good stoplight signal all the time. Our customer's got a battery disconnect on, so if he disconnects it, we have no factory brake signal. And it's possible too that brake signal on some models can 
turn off after the vehicle's been driving for so long and then you may not get this. So by installing our own stoplight switch, we can accommodate our customers' needs and ensure we always have a brake signal. To hook up the stoplight switch, there's only two wires that we have on the back here. One is a power wire, which we ran from the battery positive over to our switch here. We did attach this to the fuse harness for the braking system, so that way this power wire is also protected by the same fuse. And then the other wire coming off our switch is the output from the switch. It's our, it's our brake signal that this switch is putting out. So you would hook this directly to your monitor wire. In our case, since we're using this unit, we hooked it to the monitor wire for the unit here, which is the blue wire on the unit. The stoplight switch will come with two components. You'll have your switch right here, which you'll wire up like we just talked about, and you'll also set the depth. If we press on the brake pedal, you'll see a small pin that comes out of the switch. And when that pin is out, it's sending power through the switch, telling our system that the brake pedal is being depressed. When we release the brake pedal, it pushes that pin back in and it cuts off the output. The bracket here is custom made for your Jeep and it attaches to an existing stud right here next to your brake pedal. You just remove that nut, slide the bracket up, and then reinstall the nut. And that gives you the angle that runs right over here for our switch to make contact with the pedal. Now the only other thing that you may need on your setup here is a brake light relay. And your brake light relay goes between your stoplight switch signal on the vehicle and it allows you to cut it in and out. And this is really, it's for your lighting to make your lighting work properly. But when you're tapping into that, that's the exact same wire you'll tap into for the monitor wire on your braking system here. So this is the perfect time to install all that at the same time. Now our customer doesn't need a brake light relay since they install the battery disconnect. When the battery is disconnected, there will be no interrupting signal from our brake pedal sensor here on the vehicle that can mess with our diode wiring for the lighting. So the customer doesn't need it here, but if you don't want to use a battery disconnect switch, then you can use the brake light relay to ensure that all your lighting is going to work properly and work with your braking system. If you decide to go for the wireless brake monitor, there are a few more wires you're still going to need to hook up besides that brake signal wire. You'll have three more circuits, a red, a black, and a yellow. The red is your power circuit, which we went ahead and routed it up and we just attached this to the same fuse harness that our braking system is attached to. The black wires are ground and we just attached a ring terminal to it. And we came over here to an existing ground stud right here on the side. You can remove this bolt with an eight millimeter socket, slide your ring terminal on it and then screw it back down. And the last circuit is the yellow wire. And what this is for is for the breakaway switch output. And this is kind of neat. I like that you get a little more information on this box than the other one. You get your brakes, so this tells you when the brake pedal is being depressed. The middle one here is breakaway, so it actually tells you if the breakaway pin has been pulled. So this just hooks onto your breakaway switch cold side. So if you take the black wire that we routed out there, if you cut this back, I just use a razor knife and just strip back some of that, that black coating on the outside to expose the two wires for the breakaway switch on the inside, you'll have a black wire and you'll have a white wire. The black wire is the hot side and the white wire is the cold side. So we just took our yellow wire and we just tapped it right on to the white wire. If you are going to use a splice connector like this, we've got some available here at eTrailer.com. This is one of the quickest ways to get this hooked up. And since we're on the inside of the vehicle, you don't have to worry about any rust or corrosion or moisture on it. So this is my recommendation. You also have the option to cut the white wire and use butt connectors to reattach it with the yellow wire. And now with everything all hooked up, we can go ahead and test it out. We're going to pull the pin on our breakaway switch at the front and our pedal should depress. You can also see here on our monitor box that the breakaway switch pin light illuminated when the pin was pulled and the brake light lit up when the pedal was depressed. Now that we know that everything's working, we can go back and clean everything up. 
Use the included loom harness to cover your wiring and the included zip ties to clean all those up and make it nice and neat. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's Invisibrake Supplemental Braking System on our 2011 Jeep Liberty.